Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Inch 130 video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to continue on with just finding simple support reactions. So it's going to be nothing crazy, just like the past few examples, as you guys will see. Support reactions are pretty simple to find. And what you guys will find in the final exam is that <laughs> we will not quiz you directly on finding these simple support reactions, but they'll play a much larger role moving forward. For example, one of the units that we'll get to is trusses. Of course, to solve the truss, you're going to need to find the support reactions. The unit after that is beams. In order to find the internal forces in a beam, you're going to need to find the support reactions. So although this unit itself won't be a, like a, a standalone final question, this unit will be extremely critical to solving all of the other final exam questions. Even uh, the unit after that, friction, uh, you're going to know equilibrium. There could be some... Uh, support reactions, probably not really, but uh, the concepts are just very important moving forward. So in this case, we're going to cover another simple beam. So we did a simple beam in the first example, and as you guys will see, a simple beam is <laughs> pretty simple. But uh, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a trick that happened, uh, I believe it was the lab last year. And that's when one of the rollers is at an angle. So for a pin, it doesn't matter if it's at an angle, it's going to have two reaction forces, one in X and Y. But a roller, if it's at an angle, it's uh, something special happens. And I'm going to show you guys the quick trick. So this won't be a very long video. It's just to emphasize the trick on what happens with the roller. So with that being said, uh, let's jump into it. All right. So looking at this example, it says it wants us to determine the horizontal and vertical components of the reactions at the pin A and the reaction of the rocker B, or a rocker is another word for roller. On the beam so again very simple example we got a simple beam so we have a pin at one end roller at the other find the reaction forces so the procedure is actually the exact same so there will be nothing crazy new here for you guys the only thing we're gonna have to deal with is this rocker or roller whatever you want to call it we see that it's at an angle there so now it becomes a question of okay does does that angle impact us at all? Does it uh, do anything? Well, let's find out. So with all these questions, and so this will be for this unit, it'll be for the next week in trusses, it'll be for the next two weeks in beams, it'll be for the week after that in friction, always draw a free body diagram. I know before the midterm, students would ask, well, do I really have to draw a free body diagram? Well, typically, just for particle equilibrium is the only time you really want to draw a free body diagram then. But now it's completely changed. From now on, we should always be drawing free body diagrams. They're going to be so, so important to solving these questions. And uh, even though for a beam question, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. And even for trusses, you'll see kind of the same thing. When it gets to friction... And I, I promise you, and you guys have heard me say this before, friction is going to be your worst nightmare. The key to solving friction questions is a good free body diagram. If you have a good free body diagram, easy questions, no big deal. You have a bad free body diagram for friction, you're not going to get it. It's that simple, even though it's that complex at the same time. So let's get in the habit of drawing good free body diagrams. It's going to be very, very important moving forward. So if I got a beam here, I can represent that by drawing basically kind of a square so I'm gonna do something like this all right so that's not too bad and we know that there's a couple things one is we have a pin at a so a pin has two forces if you guys remember so it has a vertical force which I'm going to draw as so and it has a horizontal force which I'm going to draw like so and remember we usually neglect the thickness of the beam so doesn't really matter where you put that horizontal force it won't really create a moment if we're taking it uh, about a part in the beam unless they specify a thickness of the beam uh, kind of a spoiler they usually don't but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys decide because every time I say they usually don't it's like they watch my videos and go okay well that's exactly what we are going to do just to kind of mess you guys up a bit so again uh, we should label these uh, reaction forces. So I just label them AY and AX, and that's because we're looking at point A on the beam. So that's point A right there. On the other side, we got B, but we're not going to go there just quite yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the external force on the beam. So we know that we have a point load or a concentrated load of 4 kilonewtons acting downwards. So I'm just going to put 4 kilonewtons. 
And then the last thing I'm going to do real quick is just draw some dimensions of the beam. And the only reason why I'm doing this really quick is because <laughs> I'm basically trying to avoid talking about B right now. Because that's this is why we're here. We're going to figure out what the heck do we do with B. So the dimensions here would be 2 meters on this side and 6 meters on this side. So, so far, I got dimensions. I have my support reactions at A. I got my external load. So the only thing I'm really missing is that <coughs> reaction at B. So there's, there's no avoiding it right now. So here's what you guys are going to have to know. That's very, very important. This trick doesn't show up a lot, but when it does, it usually gets everybody. It usually gets everybody because what would happen is the natural instinct, and I'm just going to erase the highlighting here, is a lot of the students will just say, okay, well, it's it's a roller, so it's just going to be a vertical force as so. But that's not the case. And the reason how it's very easy to tell it's not the case is because it gives you <laughs> that angle. And if it gives you an angle, you should know that something's coming up. So here's the trick to angles on rollers is the force that the roller exerts on the beam or supports the beam with will always be perpendicular to the surface it rests on. So if our surface is as such at a 30 degree angle, we know that it's going to support the beam at a perpendicular, in a perpendicular way. So our actual reaction force at B will be something like that. So going down to the free body diagram, my reaction at B is gonna be something like that. And now this kind of messes up my symbols because, or my notation, because I usually like to put BX or BY, but if we see this, this one's kind of in between. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm just going to put B. And that's completely fine. You guys can put whatever you want. But now it becomes a question of, okay, well, I just put B in, but what angle does B act at? Because that right there, well, it's kind of useless. Kind of useless because we don't know what angle it acts at, so we kind of need this angle right here. And what's nice is that angle will always be the angle at what it's angled at. So this right here, if it's the surface is 30 degrees, this angle in here is going to be 30 degrees. So if we look at this beam now, we have three unknowns. We know that we have three equilibrium equations to solve. There's only a single point load. Things shouldn't be that bad. So let's go through the beam real quick, solve everything, and just kind of get our final answers and go from there. So that from <laughs> As of now, just kind of take this as extra practice with support conditions because, again, they're going to come up so often now. You guys are going to be able to do them in your sleep by the end of this course, but it's good to get that practice in because a lot of the questions, support reactions, are the first thing you do. You get that wrong, the rest of the question is going to be wrong. So it's going to be a really big problem if you get them wrong. So what I recommend is, okay, well, the first step, we got to try and isolate one of the forces so that we could have one equation with one unknown. And when you have a pin, it always works out if you take the moment about that pin, because the pin has two out of the unknowns, two out of the three unknowns. So if I were to take the sum of the moments about the pin, so if I were to go sum of the moments about point A, and it's in equilibrium, remember, so this must all equal zero. Well then, AX and AY cancel because they act right at point A, they will not create any sort of moment. So therefore, the only moments that we're going to receive are from B and the four kilonewtons. So let's just start with the four kilonewtons. We know that there's gonna be a moment of four kilonewtons times a distance. So the perpendicular distance in this case is gonna be six meters. But then we gotta look, okay, well, is this gonna rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? And if I hold my pen or pencil at A and I put that four kilonewtons down, we'll see that the rotation tendency is clockwise. So this will actually be a negative four times six. And then on the other side, we got B, which we know can be split into a BX and a BY. But remember, as I was saying, is we usually neglect the thickness of the beam. So BX would look something like this. I'm gonna draw it in purple. So BX would be something like this as such. And if we draw a little line, we see that that will actually intercept point A. So we're, we're not concerned about BX at all. What we're going to be concerned with is BY because if we look here, BY will definitely create a moment. So I'm going to put BY real quick. So that's what we want. So I'm not going to put BY, I'm going to put what B actually is. So we know that it's going to be 
actually I'm going to leave this out. <laughs> I'll let you, we'll talk about that after. So it's going to be B. And remember, we want that Y component. We don't want just BY. We want B and then the Y component. So to convert B into a Y component, we're going to times by cosine of 30. So this right here is just the force. And we want to times it by its perpendicular distance, which is going to be that 6 meters plus the 2 meters. And we know that it's going to be equal to 0. So last thing real quick even though I kind of spoiled it for you guys, it's just what's the rotational tendency B is going to put at point A. So if I hold my pen or pencil at point A and I go and I push up on it, as we'll see, it starts to rotate counterclockwise, which is going to be a positive moment. So I'm going to put a little positive sign right there. So we look at this equation. We got one equation, one unknown. We can solve really quickly and find that B is equal to 3.46 kilonewtons. So just like that. And I'm going to erase the 3, make it look just a little bit nicer. So 3.46 kilonewtons. So we already solved for B. Nice and easy. That wasn't too bad. So the trick is just remembering that if the roller is angled, we must place the force perpendicular to the surface at which it is angled at, which isn't hard. You just got to kind of remember that trick. So question's not done yet because if we look up, it also wants the reactions at A. So now we can just use our other two equations, some of the forces in X, some of the forces in Y, to easily solve for these. So I'm just going to go down. It doesn't matter which one you start with, so let's just go some of the forces in X is equal to 0. So we look up here, we got AX. So we got AX. And we know that B actually has an x component because it's at that angle and if we look that x component's going to the left so it's going to be minus and then whatever value of b is so we got 3.46 so i'm just going to put that in directly and then remember we want the x component we're not interested in b itself we're interested in its x or horizontal component so to do that we're going to multiply by sine of 30. and we know that since it's in equilibrium Everything's going to equal zero. So if we go down here, it's pretty easy to tell that AX is just going to be equal to 3.46 times sine of 30. We throw all that into our calculator. What we get is 1.73 kilonewtons. And then I just like show the direction. You know, it's going to be something like that. So I'm just going to this around like this so again I like to show the direction I know that a lot of people are gonna ask me real quick okay well, what about B we all know B is kind of funky so if you want we can easily put the direction in so I can just add a little bit of extra room here and we know that B is going to act kind of in this direction as so so found AX we found B last one to do is find a Y so if we take the sum of the forces in the y direction, so sum of the forces in y, again, equilibrium must equal zero. So if we look up, our first one is, of course, a y. So we got a y that's going upwards, and then we had a concentrated load of four kilonewtons, so we're going to go minus four. If we look at b y, it actually has a component going upwards, so we're going to go plus, and then 3.46. And we're going to multiply that by its component, which we see is going to be times cosine of 30. And all of this must equal 0. So again, one equation, one unknown, nice and easy. We can find that AY is going to be equal to 1.00. I just kept the zeros in to try and keep it consistent. You can put 1, that's fine. That's kilonewtons and it's actually going upwards. So I'm going to put a little upward arrow. And I'm going to box my final answer. We'll check if you guys boxed your final answers on the midterm. <laughs> and that's it. So again, like I said, it's not a hard question. It's just to introduce you guys to if you ever see an angle, or sorry, a roller at an angle. It's a great trick. I remember there was a lab question, like I said, very simple question. No one got the trick. Well, not no one. Of course, a lot of you guys got the trick. It was a lab, but uh, it's, it's, it slowed a lot of progress down. 
I like the lab for this section because it's usually really fast. You know, as a TA, it's great because you go in and maybe an hour, you're, you're already leaving. But this question slowed everyone down by 20 minutes because one person would say, okay, yeah, it acts at an angle. And another person, oh, it doesn't add a does not at, act at an angle. I can't speak right now. I'm getting like a tongue twister. So stuff like that happens and then you guys slow down, but I'm here to reassure you if something's at an angle, remember the force will be perpendicular to that surface if it's a roller. It'll always be perpendicular to that surface. And that'll play a role later on in friction later when we give you wheels. Because wheels will bear on the ground and if the ground is sloping, you'll have to find out where the normal force is, stuff like that. So. Thank you guys all so much for listening. In the next topic, we'll, con we'll continue the idea of support reactions, just different cases. Uh, this week is going to be an easy week. It's going to be easy examples, and we're just going to try and show you all the different uh, support conditions you can have because later on, you're going to have to use them extensively, and you guys will see what I'm talking about later. So this is, this is really nice right now, but again, next week, the week after, things are going to get start getting more challenging, and this is the fundamentals that you guys will need to know. So thank you all so much for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next video.